Okay, I'm here with People Senior Royals editor Michelle Torba is with us. Michelle, it's great to see you. Sharon, great to see you too. Thank you. Now, Michelle, you've been covering the Royals for 20 years. I'm in awe of you right now. <laughs> and I'm going to ask you a lot about your favorite experiences, your, your best moments uh, in your career. But first, I want to talk about how you got into royal reporting in the first place. Is this something you always wanted to do? <laughs> Tell us about your road to becoming People Senior Royals uh, editor. It's a, a very prestigious title, by oh, the way. Thanks. Thank you. Um, tell my parents that. No, <laughs> I. Um, I. It's funny. It's funny because when I was 11 years old, I, as as maybe no young girls do, I decided for Halloween I was going to dress up as Queen Elizabeth. Oh wow! <laughs> and I look a little like Blanche from Golden Girls because I thought Queen Elizabeth <laughs> would have a fan, but um, but in a big <laughs> straw hat. But um, anyway, I. Um, I ended up um, pursuing journalism. I love telling stories and writing, and I got a job at People um, pretty soon out of college. And what was so uh, really um, kismet for me in my career is that I was able to do that thing where my passion was royals and telling stories, and they merged at a time when we were just starting to have this renaissance with the next generation of royals. And so, in fact, the job of royals editor, which which is a cool title, I have to even I have to. <laughs> it is a good title. <laughs> you um, know what it is. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I'm not going to lie. Um, the, the job of Royals Editor didn't even exist, actually. And I sort wow. of, um, I, I, I um, asked, could it be its own thing? Because we were coming up at this time when it was clear we were on to the next chapter for the royal family. Wow. It's been good timing. Okay, now, we hear a lot, we hear the term palace statement. Yes. When we hear about a palace statement, who exactly is that from? Yeah, it's a good question. The, the palace, the pa I always think palaces don't talk, right? But we always say <laughs> what the palace says. Um, so a palace statement means a statement issued by one of the offices representing William and Kate, that would be Kensington Palace, Meghan and Harry, who are now under Buckingham Palace, but a little bit in flux. Yeah. Um, Prince Charles who and Camilla, who are under the umbrella of um, Clarence House. And then, of course, the Queen and Prince Philip, who are also Buckingham Palace. So we use palace generally to sort of encompass all of those various offices. Got it. And we also hear palace sources, palace insiders yeah. a lot, which can be very vague. But these are tried and trusted, uh, credible sources that you found. Yes. And, and again, I've been I've been working this beat for 20 years, Simon for even, even a little longer. Um, and we've been together the whole time. Um, and those those sources take decades to cultivate, to gain trust. Wow. Um, and we're really, um, you know, careful about who who we would ever um, rely on in terms of, um, you know, fact checking and making sure we're we're as accurate as possible. You have sources outside of the palace as well when you're reporting on the royals without giving too much away their identity for your <laughs> they're, they're supposed to be anonymous. Yes. Uh, what kind of sources do you go to outside of the palace? Yeah, so, um, you know, there are friends who speak with us. There are people, we, we sometimes say, in their circle, um, which means people who, who interact with them. Um, and to, to sort of, like, be specific about their exact role would, would compromise, you know, how... Um, would would make them feel that they couldn't speak as freely as maybe they could otherwise. So people who interact with them, friends, um, people who work maybe you know um, in similar sort of um, similar circles as the palace aides who are within, and sometimes palace aides themselves, and then and then of course there there are PRs too. Intriguing. <laughs> I want to know how royal reporting has changed over the years. Obviously, there are many ways to answer that, but what would you say are the, the biggest changes you've seen uh, throughout your career? Yeah. You know, one of the things when I first started reporting at People, and it was a little little predated my time, but it definitely caught my eye, was, it, you know, the early days of um, People and journalism um, at People were very sort of um, male-driven, and oh. there, was, there was sort of a perspective that was less, uh, definitely less feminist than it is today, less, um, you know, um, f female forward the way we are. Our, our staff in New York and, and, um, and myself in Orlando, we're women, <laughs> we're women led. And so we're very focused on um, making sure that it's not just about what, um, you know, Kate's wearing or what, you know, Megan's wearing, but about the issues um, that they're really trying to promote. Um, and then we've seen obviously a lot of changes since Diana. Um, some of those were, you know, the result of, of the tragic um, way that she died and, the, and her lifetime being pursued by the paparazzi. And some of those changes were put into place to protect the 
current generation, um, you know, obviously William, Kate, Meghan, and Harry, and we know Meghan and Harry have had their own real, really, you know, serious issues with that. Yeah, wow. And as you mentioned earlier, the royals are on social media now as well. It took yes, us exactly. by surprise initially, didn't it? It did, and you know, I think it really does open it up. Um, it, it, it puts a little, um, you know, con more contemporary sort of um, oxygen into the royal family, and it, it helps them connect with younger generations, which is something that's really important to them. Um, and it makes for, you know, fun content for us too, so win-win. <laughs> now, I need to know how many members of the royal family you have met, <laughs> So and who. Yeah. Yes, yes. So I'm not, I'm not, you know, invited over to dinner um, often or ever, to the palace, never. Not yeah, once um, in a while, no. Yeah, no, never. Um, <laughs> but, um, but I have had royal, uh, I would call them royal brushes. Um, yeah. So with. Um, Prince Harry with um, Princess Kate. What was Harry like? Well, I I have to say, Harry for me was the experience that most really um, inspired me in terms of um, of our royals coverage and what the royal family can do. And that was in 2016, and he was visiting Orlando. It was so amazing. Oh. Harry came to Orlando, so nice. um, he, yes, he, he was actually at Walt Disney World um, as one does, and he was there for his Invictus Games, which we know yes. have become you know his passion project. Um, and it was pre megan so he was single, um, and people actually did a sit-down interview with him. Simon interviewed him at Kensington Palace. We'd had a great cover story. Um, but I got to see him up close in action with these athletes. And one of them, I was um, I was watching him. He, he uh, it, you may remember, but there was a, a young woman with a, um, a, who had had a very um, scarred face, and she, he gave her this big, she was one of the athletes, and he gave her this big kiss on the cheek. It was so sweet, and we wow. were like, oh, Prince Charming. Then I happened to see her at a wheelchair rugby event a couple days later, and I went up to her, her name was Katie Kuiper, and I said, oh my gosh, Katie, that was incredible, like watching Prince Harry. How did that feel when he kissed you? And she gave me an answer that just stopped me in my tracks. She said, I, um, I was, I served in Gu Guantanamo Bay um, and um, in the military, and it was such a traumatic, horrible experience for her that she looked me in the eye and she said, I, I came home and shot myself in the face. Wow. And she said, no one wants to look at me. I'm invisible to most people, but Harry saw me and Harry oh. kissing me and I sat there and just sobbed. It was, so it was, it was wow. really, and it really showed again the power. We write a lot about like, right, the, the, the spectacle and the pageantry and the tradition and it's all fun and it's lovely and wonderful and it's an escape, but that was real. Um, and that was something that I'll never forget because the impact he had was, was human to human. It That's was powerful. Incredible. Amazing story. Well, we're gonna split this convo into two parts. That was okay. part one. Okay, yep. part two, I'm gonna ask you about your personal experiences on the job, yep. uh, biggest stories, etc. We'll do that next episode. How about that? That sounds great.